This is your Mustang Story. In this episode of Your Mustang Story, the hills are alive with the sound of music and Mustangs. Carrie Sturgeon plays a banjo and plays it really well. Well enough to be a teacher, and probably write a book on him. His first Mustang was a beautiful white Mach 1, and his next, a 65 GT Beauty. He got it for a dollar. But before you let out a big cheer, you may want to stay tuned to catch the details in this episode of Your Mustang Story. Carrie, welcome to the show. I'm glad you could take the time to, to be with us. You have a very special Mustang, and so I'm anxious to get to it. But first, uh, let me ask a little about, about, about you. Where do you live? Manzano Mountains, east of Albuquerque. So I'm at 7,000 feet. Cool. What did you do for a living? Or you're retired now, aren't you? I'm retired now. I've been retired for about 15 years. Actually, when I first started working, I was working at a restaurant oh, wow. in Seacrest. It's now, no longer there. I was uh, started at the bottom. I was a busboy. Where did you spend most of your career? I was actually uh, working at Sandy National Labs in Albuquerque. When I first started, I was in computer-aided design, microcircuits and stuff. I was there actually 40 years, and I finally wow. said, you know, it's, I need to do something else besides go to work every day. Well, all right. Well, then this is a perfect lead in. Tell us what your Mustang origin story is. Like, how did you get hooked on Mustangs? Okay. Going back to the restaurant that I worked at, when I turned 16, the 65s were out and I was cleaning up tables one night and I looked out the window and there was a 65 Mustang there and I thought, oh my, oh my gosh, that's a fantastic looking car. I, I'd love to get one of those. So I went home the next morning, got up and I asked my dad, I said, hey dad, did you see those new 65 Mustangs? He goes, oh yeah, those are pretty nice. I thought about getting one. And I said, you know what, dad, I'd love to get one of those. He says, you know how to get one? And I said, what's that? He says, get a better job. <laughs> so I was able to get a Sandia Labs. And in 1970, when the 70s came out, of course, I didn't like them because they went to two headlights. The 69th had four. I actually bought my first 69 Mustang Mach 1. I had that car for uh, 13 years. What color was it? It was white on white. There was only two of them in the in New Mexico. I had one. There was a guy in Santa Fe that had one. What was the motor? What was the transmission? Uh, there was a 351 Windsor motor. It had a two barrel in it, which uh, gas mileage wasn't really a big deal then because gas was cheap and I had my foot in it most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> what options? Anything? Um, it didn't have power anything except for power motor. That was pretty much it. It was a three speed and uh, you know, it didn't have power steering. It was a real bare to turn. No power windows, no power it was, anything. It was the most affordable Mach 1. That that's right. It was the cheapest. It, it was funny when my dad and I went in and looked at it. I was at the end of the year sale. The 70s were coming out and they were trying to get rid of their stock. They had three cars in there. They had two red ones, which I hate red red <laughs> cars. They had a white one and they had a, uh, this kind of a butterscotch colored orange. And I go, wow, I would really love to have that. My dad told me, he says, well, that's $3,000 more than you can afford. So I guess you'll have to get this white one. So that's what I got. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> that was a bummer. <laughs> oh, it's, yeah. Yeah, it still it was better than running around in a Volkswagen. That's right. Uh, had that car for 13 years. Unfortunately, oh, that's I, a long time. Yeah. You had that unfortunately, car. I had it. I got a three year mortgage on it, as they say. I had just paid it off for the following months. I was coming down and it was slightly raining, and a guy ran a red light and oh. hit me. It, it hit so hard that the motor broke oh. the motor out of the car. It fell and hit the ground. Wow. And uh, I took it to Rich Ford. They said, well, you know, it's pretty much totaled. I said, you know what? I, just fix it. And they go, well, okay, we can fix it, but it's not going to be right. I said, just fix it. And for another 10 years, I drove the thing with a bit of frame. <laughs> just a great car. I fully loved it and everything. But, you know, the family came along and we didn't fit it. So sure. we get rid of it. Well, what's a story that you remember with that car that wasn't the running in the stop sign and you had to get rebuilt? What did I remember about yeah, it? Yeah, what, what was a good time you had with it? I took it to Florida. A friend of mine that I've known since I was 11 years old, we got together and we decided to take a trip. And, you know, what are you going to do? You go to Florida, it's hot. It was in October we went down there, but it was still hot. No air, 
had the windows down. We were in shorts and uh, muscle shirts and sandals and trying to keep cool. And it was just, it was cool to drive this car down there. Yeah, you were young yeah. and hot yeah, and on fire. Know, yeah. yeah, that's, that's right. A... <laughs> so we had a great time. But that's wonderful. Long, uh, you know, put a lot of miles on it, but, you know, it was fun. So we well, had it for what? I had it for 13 years. Including the 10 that's after right. the wreck. Okay, I got years. you. And it was kind of funny. This friend of mine, he was driving. We were in Houston and, and uh, we're driving along and, and he comes up on another Mustang Mach 1 and he says, I wonder if this guy wants to race. And I said, well, I don't know, Larry. I mean, you know, you have to use your own uh, discretion on it. We pulled up on it, and, and uh, on the hood, it said 428. And I said, but, well, maybe we don't want to do that. <laughs> Wisdom comes along, yeah, even, that's right. even back then. Yeah, that's right. My goodness. Uh, yeah. Your Mustang story returns after this. Mustang, Mach 1. Mach 1, special sports performance, sports roof, Mustang. Mach 1, something scorching to keep Mustang the original and the front runner, thundering along far ahead of the pack. Now, more of your Mustang story. So what Mustang do you have now and what? how did you come about it? Okay, the one I have now, it's a uh, uh, almost a one of a kind, actually. The, the original guy that bought it worked at a Ford Motor Company in El Paso. And he, I believe he was a salesman and he bought that car and he ordered it with all the options. The now tell us, he, the, tell us the year, the, the okay. color, the color, what body configuration. Okay, it's a uh, 65 GT convertible. It's Twilight Turquoise with Twilight Turquoise and white interior. It's got a white roof on it. It's a 289 four barrel. You know, it's got the whole GT package, pony interior, the gauges. Automatic. Yeah, it's an automatic. It's got the center console in it, power roof, front disc brakes. You know, it's loaded. About the only thing it doesn't have is power front disc brakes. I found that out pretty quick because I was driving along in there and you get to this light where it turns yellow and you think, should I stop or should I go? And I'm thinking, maybe I ought to stop. And I had my foot in the radiator trying to get the car to, <laughs> car to stop. I mean, because I thought it had power disc brakes because it got on the brake, brake pedal. It's got this little round chrome rain down there. It says disc brakes on it. And I thought, well, it's got power disc brakes. Well, no, well, it, does, it doesn't it have power disc, disc brakes. brakes so, yeah. yeah, that was uh, oh, an awakening. I have a 68 with manual brakes, drum brakes all the way yeah, around. Yeah, really? So if you want excitement, drive that in the rain. <laughs> well, that's real fun. That's excitement. Yeah. Well, that's so. amazing. So now that car is not in original condition. What uh, happened to it? Uh, the The GT? Yes. When I got it, my brother-in-law bought that car in 1976, and it had a partial restoration done to it. Now, my, my brother was an investor kind of person. You know, he invested all kinds of stuff. And in his mindset, he thought, I'll take that car home, stick in my garage, and when I retire, it'll be worth a million dollars. And I thought, well, you know, that might be if he kept it up, but he never worked on it. And the only time he worked on it is when I went to El Paso. And mm. uh, there was times I'd go down there for a week, and all I did was work on this thing. Wow. But it sat in the garage, and we, we never we never could start it. It would never start. Old gas. Uh, old well, you, you'd, turn the key on it, you'd turn the key on it, act like it was going to start. As soon as you let it go of the key, it would die. And i go, you know, I don't understand what's going on here. Although he had it in the garage. And the steering wheel was off of it. He didn't have a steering wheel on it. And he had the gauge cluster, that uh, tack and clock. He had that out of it. I said, Tom, how come you don't put that in here? He says, I'm afraid somebody's going to steal this car. Wow. So he was had that self-conscious kind of thing. You know? Eccentric. He was yeah, eccentric. he was eccentric. Okay, so he bought that car, sat in his garage for 26 years, never moved. One you had day. a barn find in the family. That's it. And so he, uh, unfortunately, after 9-11, he passed away in October, about a week after his birthday. And he was within two months of retiring. Oh. 
and he passed away. And I went to the memorial service down there. And next day I sat with my sister-in-law and her daughter and her daughter's husband. And, and out of the clear blue sky, she looked at me and she says, uh, well, would you like to get Tom's Mustang? I go, well, yeah, H half El Paso wants it, you know. And uh, she says, well, it's will to you come and get it. It's taking up room in my garage. My goodness. Okay. So I asked her daughter, I said, Alyssa, do you want this car? And she goes, I don't want it. And I looked at her husband. I said, you don't want this classic car? He says, I wouldn't know what to do with it. I can't even fix my own car. So I cut the ties from yeah. everybody. Yes. I went down the following month, picked it up, brought it home. That was kind of interesting because I had to, I wanted just a pickup with a flatbed to pull it up. And, and U-Haul decided, we're not doing that. You have to have a box truck. So they charged me extra money for that. Anyway, I'm coming up in, in that truck and just... It just sucked gas like crazy. I mean, I was lucky to get the Socorro. I mean, I, I didn't think I was going to make it. And I pulled in there, and I hear this beep, and I'm, I'm just putting fuel in this truck, and I hear this beep, 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 and I'm thinking, what's going on? And I turn around, and I look, and here comes this other box truck. It's bigger, and on the flatbed behind it, he's got a, a Daytona Charger <laughs> setting off this car. And he comes up, he pulls right up next to me, and he goes, hey, I like a Mustang. And I go, thanks. He says, is it for sale? I said, no. He says, why not? I said, I just picked it up. So that was kind of an interesting conversation. Yeah, so, you couldn't even get it home without somebody giving you an offer. That's right. right. And so when I got it home, it had snowed at my house. Oh. And so I got it in the garage, but then I couldn't get that box truck out of my driveway. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, in a that, way. that was nuts. And so the first thing I did was I parked in the driveway. I started getting a little book out and started going through the list and saying, okay, this needs to be replaced. I need to fix this. Just start making a big old huge list. I've had the car for, uh, what, 20? Well, I've had it since 01. And I've invested a lot of money into it. But you know what? I've been offering a lot of money. Oh, no. This and is, I, a, and I've told this is no. an award-winning yeah. 65 convertible with that beautiful blue and the white and uh, blue interior. Yeah. It's absolutely Stunning. It is. And stunning. if you watch, and if our if our listening audience to, goes over to the YouTube channel, they may see a still picture of it. So yep. that's how we got to today or to this near time. So what's the last thing you did with it? What did the last thing I did to it? Well, let's see. Uh, let's put it this way: I've done everything to the car except replace the wiring underneath the dash. Oh, wow. I have not re replaced that. Because any time I take like their isthma cluster out, the wires have this sort of like muscle memory. They're already shaped to how they're supposed to be connected. True. And I don't touch them because I know if I try to move them, that it'll just the you know, disintegrate. Disintegrate. So I don't I don't mess with it. And so far, I've been lucky and not have to do anything with it. Uh, everything else has been done. Uh, yeah. I just recently built rebuilt the motor. Uh, one of the guys in our club came over and helped me pull the motor, and we took it down to a, a shop in Albuquerque. They rebuilt it, brought it back, put it in there. The, the motor probably has, um, I'm thinking, something less than 30,000 miles on it. That was probably five or six years ago I had that done. So I'm putting less than 5,000 miles on it a year. Yeah, That's but to your credit, I've seen yeah. – I. I do see you often, and then yeah. you do drive the car. So I do drive it's, it. It's not a. It's not I a. I probably don't. I probably don't wave as much as I should. <laughs> yeah, it's not a trailer queen, and no. it's not a garage queen. That's right. Uh, well, how was it? Uh, you went to uh, Amarillo with it, not long. I did. Huh? I have gone to Amarillo twice. So that and that's a five-hour drive yeah. by modern car. Right. So, yeah. But if you're a Mustang, you make it about three and a half. <laughs> <laughs> that applies certainly to some of the Shelby kids That's in, our right. family, in our group. Yep. Your Mustang story returns after this. Look out, world. Yes, you can. Here comes Ford. Yes, you can afford America's best selling sports car, Ford Mustang. Yes, you. Yes, you can. Price, after all, is one of the reasons Mustang is best selling. But not just price. You get the sporty performance of a 2.3 liter overhead cam engine. Mustang, a real car value in a real sports car. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Here comes Ford. Now, more of your Mustang story. You're a member of, of an MCA club. Yes. Let me ask you, what's some of your favorite things to do inside the MCA club? Well, you know, I'm a, I'm kind of conservative about things like that. I do go out and participate in certain things, but as far as, you know, if they have a show like in Kansas or something, I, I have no interest in, in driving out there. If, if the opportunity arised where somebody said they're going to haul a bunch of their cars up there and they have room for another one, 
then I would be tempted to go up there. I, I would probably enjoy that. Hmm. I, I don't get out that much, and I don't go too far outside of the perimeter of New Mexico. You know, I have been to Arizona, I've been to Colorado, I've been to Texas, and that's pretty much the limit. You have some good roads here, so yeah. I can't blame yeah. you too far. There's a lot of world to explore, and you have a car that's actually really solid, so your options are pretty wide open. And well, it would probably make it. Oh, yeah. It would pro- oh, yeah I'd probably be worn out, yeah. but it'd probably make it. So, um, so, so what tips would you give someone who's planning to restore a Mustang? Well, you know, 10 years ago, you could pick up one of these cars for like 2500 drive it home. And, and start on it. Now, uh, it's got to the point that if you want one of those, you're going to have to either spend $2,500 and it doesn't have anything in it. There's no interior, no engine, no transmission, nothing. Missing and, fenders, and, yeah. And, missing, and it's just a shell. And, and that's where you start. Or you pay 25000 and you've got a pretty decent one, and then you can make it the way you want to right. make it. And, right. and that's the kind of the problem. And so... So advice to a, a young fellow who's fancy is caught by a Mustang, a classic Mustang, save more money. <laughs> <laughs> save more money. Well, it, there are people out there that are able to get cars. The, there's a gal in our club that was able to acquire a, I think it's a replica bullet. And, oh, and the guy had just, you know... It was in the garage. He's got a lot of cars, and he just didn't need it anymore and, and wanted to clean up his collection. And, she, and of course, she didn't tell me what she paid for it, and probably I probably don't really want to know. But yeah, uh, there are cars yeah. out there, that, and I see them on the Internet all the time. This guy found this little old lady from Pasadena who wants to get rid of this Ford Mustang Coupe, and it's 2300 bucks. Oh, yeah, are you I, sure that's all you want? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, those cases are pretty rare. Yeah, pretty rare. I know that one of our club members got a... Uh, 94 convertible. I think it was a six dollar for two grand. So there's a way in. It's amazing. So there's it a way in. Amazing. There's a, now it needs paint. It needs yeah. you know, seat covers. Blah blah blah. But there is a way in if you have the Jones for a Mustang. That's right. There you, are ways. You, you just got to look. You can get one. Yep. Wow, Kerry. How has owning a Mustang changed your perspective of the world at large or your own personal world? Well, I've always liked Mustangs. They're probably the only car that has continued through the years. The, the competitors, uh, you know, Chevrolet, Dodge, whatever, they have discontinued and then re, retooled and then discontinued. And they just don't have the, the people base, whatever you call it, to keep them going every year. Of course, Mustang has just brought out that brand new uh, S650 model. The, that's what they call it. And uh, With the dark I, horse. I, oh, yeah, the dark horse. I'd love to have a dark horse, but, you know, I, I probably wouldn't be able to keep tires on it, would be my guess. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as a matter of fact, it's funny you said that because uh, uh, I have I have a 65. I would love to get one of those newer Mustangs, but I think in, that I'm probably going to wait till 2025 wow. to get one. Then I'll have a 65 and a 25. Oh, that, yeah. That's what I'm thinking. That's yeah, a nice little I don't nice know if that'll set. ever happen, but, you know, it's it's kind of in my thought process. Hey, I'm, I know. I'm right there with you. I have a, a white 68 coupe. I would like to have a anniversary in Wimbledon white. There you it, go. It's, it's, I just, in New Mexico sun, Wimbledon white seems to survive. Yep, that's whereas right. Whereas the red is gone in a minute. And, you know, it's funny you ask me that. I, most of the cars I have, or I have owned, are white. In fact, I have a brand new Kia, and it's white. It's a, Yeah, it's a survival it's a, it's a mechanism out yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> white doesn't show dirt. And if anybody has a car out here that has uh, dark, or especially black, there's a lot of black cars out here. Right. You can, Get you can clean right them away. on, you can clean them up, and they're beautiful. And five between, minutes later, they got dirt on them. Yeah, between it. pollen and dust, that's yeah. that. Yeah. Well, thanks, Kerry. I appreciate you being thanks, on Bob. the show. This was fun. There's a herd of people coming our way, so we're going to scoot out of here. Okay. Kerry, have a great week. We'll see you again soon. Thanks, Bob. See you on the road. Kerry's car is Cherry. I'm glad I finally got him to sit down and talk about his adventures and how he came upon that beautiful car. We want to hear your Mustang story, too. Reach out to us at contact at yourmustangstory.com. And please follow, like, and subscribe wherever you find us on the Internet. And thanks for listening. See you next time. The views and opinions expressed on your Mustang story are solely those of the participants and do not necessarily represent Spirited USA or its sponsors. Send questions and comments to contact at yourmustangstory.com. Join us next time for your Mustang story.